Hey guys, Shara Knight Paladin here, and welcome back to my channel. Today, as you can see, it's a bit different. The setup is different, and maybe you've read from the title. This is a review of this particular pad. And a review is not really something I plan or planned to do on this channel. Funds-wise, time-wise, uh, I don't really have the time or the knowledge exactly to do reviews of items and also here in the Philippines certain items that is easily accessible to most people is a bit hard to get over here. So take these reviews as something that I did buy for myself, I wanted to use for myself, and there are just a few things I need to talk about at that particular item. So don't expect regular reviews on this channel. Also, as I am an artist based in the Philippines, these items are things that would be easily found here or if ever in Metro Manila. These reviews will be things that are to help or maybe even just talk about stuff here in the Philippines. So it's sort of that market. Okay, let's jump into it. So we are talking about the Berkeley watercolor pad or Berkeley, however, however you would want to pronounce it. It's a 180 GSM pad. It's as big as my 15 inch laptop. It's 24 sheets. And it's pretty big. It's not the size that I usually get. My Canson watercolor pad that I bought after this is a good 3 fourths ish of the size. This is what I usually use, so I mean the size, not this pad. I might talk about that pad later on. Maybe you've watched my uh, Drop Pop Candy Title Speed Paint. And I did make mention of this pad. And I felt like I had a few more things to say about it that I didn't say in that video. So when you open the pad, ignoring that little thing in the top, because it's covering my name and stuff, maybe you can see it's a nice creamish color, which is pretty good. I was really looking for that type of paper. And it has some tooth to it. Except what you wouldn't see in this video is that it's chalky, or it's very dry. I feel like it's really sucking up any moisture that gets onto it. Then again, uh, I guess I'm not really used to watercolor pads, so maybe I thought, hey, it might be just like that. For reference, the paper that I use is the Canson watercolor paper, but it's the loose leaves one, so it's this huge roll of paper that our both just told us to buy in the of year, and just tell them, oh, get the Canson watercolor, watercolor paper, but I don't know what the GSM is, I don't know what type of paper this is, but I'll show you. If anything, I feel like it's probably hot pressed because there's almost no texture. It's very smooth and it takes water very well. As you can see, there's the line less. So I'm using just pencil here and paint. There is some uh, speckling, but it's not too bad. I really like this paper to be honest, especially since it's the first paper I used for watercolor. So this is where I come from. To show you how it acts with line drawings, it works very well. It doesn't suck up nor dry up your pen. I'm using a fine liner here. This was the Unipin black fine liners. So see, it's this is what I'm used to. So when I switched to this with something that has a lot of tooth, I was a little bit um, disoriented, I guess. Okay, so let's start. The first drawing on here is this, done in February 2016, and from afar it seems like it's it's all good, all fine and dandy, except there's some splotching. Maybe you think that oh, maybe Shadow just doesn't know how to paint. <laughs> Clearly, no, I do know how to paint. So maybe you saw here that my usual style is very blendy. Um, let's see. Okay, like here in the cloak, over here. You see that there's this light base yellow and this darker golden yellow here to act a shadow and it's very blended in. That's how I usually color. But when I tried doing that same technique over on this pad, I couldn't do it. Number one, it wouldn't blend. No matter how much I tried to reactivate the color with water, it would only go a very small distance. So for example, when I was trying to shade in 
this wash, this green wash to tie in everything with the pants. They're supposed to be yellower. And as you can see, there are demarcation lines of the green. So I would put it here. And then I would try to blend it out with water, right? Except the water only got that far. And it never really erased that demarcation line. So I thought maybe I'm just a little rusty. Because it was almost a few months since I finished the class and then I did this drawing. So I just thought that it was very dry. Maybe I'm just doing things wrong. I tried to add more water. But when I did that, the brush would just kind of scratch off the surface and it would have these little balls of paper and I should have known from the start. I thought it was cheap, it was big. It might have been a good deal. I guess this is punishment for being a cheapskate. So here you can see that it's supposed to be more blended in and I just really had to find ways to make things blend out. Like these parts here, it's not supposed to be this cheeky. It's supposed to be uh, washed out on this panel. But I just did my best. Next thing, I tried my normal anime technique of having lines and crap like that. So the first thing I noticed is that it really sucked out the life of my fine liner. So I'll show you the foot area. Where is it? Whoops. You can see here I did try to go over it several times, but if you look really closely, the lines are really not solid at all. Unlike with the Canson one, you saw it was really nice and smooth and solid. So I had to go over the lines so many times just trying to make it look um, filled in, basically. So again, I had the same problem here, even though I did get to blend it out a bit, but the concentration of paint is still too much for what I usually would use. So, given that, the next month, I tried using a water brush. And the logic here is that the water brushes are constantly saturated with water, so maybe it wouldn't suck the life out of my paint. It'll stay active f longer than I usually would want it to stay active, which is good for this paper. So what happened is, this is entirely water brush and pen. I used the Sakura Migrant Pigma pen here. It fared better than this blue pilot drawing pen because this one got just sucked up. The Pigma fared better but it still had a lot of speckling and that's a pen so I didn't want to use up my Pigma on just this. I just did one drawing with it and it did better and even the water brush, I guess mainly as I mentioned, it was constantly saturated with water. It was easier to blend. The main problem this time became that it got really splotchy in big areas. So for example here, I wanted it to be somewhat pinkish. So it's, it was supposed to blend out like this. Except when I tried to blend it out, the paint stopped there, leaving a demarcation line again. And I tried to reactivate it, it wouldn't anymore. Same thing with this part here. I laid down a new coat of paint, tried to blend it out this way, did not work. So it's, by this time I realized that this might not be a good pad after all. And I thought maybe what if I use ink, um, ink pencils. So I did this. This the, and this entire set, this is the joint I like the least. And I used the Derwent Ink Tense pencils. If you're not familiar with it. It's pretty much what I call their pencils, except they dry ink in an ink manner, so it's a bit difficult to reactivate them. But I thought since they, they're more pigmented, they should be able to fare better. So I use these. I don't use these often, mainly because I'm not really fond of watercolor pencils. And I did this, except it became harder. Um, as you can see, I used the water brush again here. It didn't really blend out. The paint really didn't dissolve. And it became very difficult to blend. So as you can see here, there's some color different minor color differences, mainly because I really couldn't blend it out properly. And I ended up doing the background with normal watercolor. Since it was like really it was really corroding the pigment of the pencil. And I didn't want to waste it anymore. So last my last test and the last drawing here in this pad 
until maybe I run out of normal paper. I drew it on the back. <laughs> so here's the normal side. Here's the back side. The back side is smoother as you can see. There's no tooth or anything. And it takes water far better. Except it still kind of sucks thing out. Sucks the life out of your paints and the water itself. So there's far less streaking except it does sort of bloom out a little. Which is I really don't like doing that. So I just have to work with it. As you can probably tell by now, I don't have a good review nor a good experience with this pad. It's cheap, yes. It's easy to find, yes. You can find it in a national bookstore, yes. But it's a pain in the ass, to be honest. And I really don't recommend getting this anymore. If ever just use it for normal sketches, I'll show you. So let's do a quick test. I'm using the Pilot Drawing Pen. So let's see. I want to draw hair, for example. Do you see? Let me zoom in. Yay! Let's try a circle. Ah! We're back with some paint. Let's use this really intense violet. It's saturated, it's saturated well. Let's try coloring in that somewhere here. So let's try activating it. Okay, it's lifting out just a bit. Let's keep on going until it goes gradient. So it's going pretty far right. We're just. Some people might like this, but it's not sp spreading with the amount of water that I expected it to spread. And when it dries, you will see that um, there's still demarcation lines between water. So when usually with this canton, with this paper, if I go back to this area here. And reactivate it. It doesn't. It doesn't been long, right? It would reactivate and blend out. This is reactivating, but in a very minimal manner. It's not blending anymore, and you can see it's starting to corrode. Oh, the camera can't really pick it up, but it's starting to corrode the paper over there. So I hope it gives you a fair idea of what I went through. So let's try to the ink dance pencils this time. Yeah, I don't really want to do this, but. I guess I'm gonna show you anyway. Let's grab a nice color here. That's all red. So I'm using the Derwent Chili Red. Let's color it over here. Okay, I guess that's fine for now. Don't throw that away. And let's try to blend it out, right? Okay, doing well so far. Doing well so far. It's starting to not do so well. <laughs> I'm trying to activate this area and blend it out. Uh, but no go. Trying to activate. Since this ink, I don't really expect it to reactivate as well as watercolor. But you can see it's starting to bloom just a little bit here at the edges. And it's not blending out. Which, when I tried ink dense with water color pad, it blended out too for some time. So that's the front side, right? Let's test out the back side since they drew an, a painting there. And the back side, in my opinion, if you, if you have this pad, is way better than the front side because it's smoother. So let's grab my pink back. Let's use this green this time. If I'm correct, it's Viridian and Halo Blue together. So this is what I'm used to. This, this level of reactivation is what I'm used to. But it corrodes a bit faster than the front side. Okay, so that kind of turned out well. 
Let's grab this chili red there went again. Put it up here. Lays down smoother. Ah, see it. It still corrodes. It really corrodes, but um, it looks better. So I guess my suggestion for people in the Philippines or anyone who has access to this particular brand of pad is don't get it unless you're really fond of really dry papers but it really takes up a lot of time just making things try to blend in and out and i don't really want to recommend this to anyone if ever you are going to get a pad and say you're in the philippines and you go to national bookstore you see this and maybe you see this canson i'm not sponsored i just really like canson i suggest getting this because it handles the water better albeit it's a bit slippery but it's better than this dry thing so maybe you might have had a different experience with your Berkeley watercolor pad please let me know down in the comments if there are certain techniques that i don't know of how to deal with this pad because i really really got pissed with it yes please try to stay away from this pad it's cheap i know and the other pads are very expensive but please if you want to save yourself a lot of trouble get a different pad not this pad maybe another line of Berkali. i'm not familiar with it but i hope this has been informative i hope it has it will save you some pain um i hope you like it leave down comments or like if you feel this is helpful or if you agree with my sentiments and subscribe i usually do speed paints and not reviews and see you around.